What is up guys, Greedy Knight here with a discussion on Sunbreak. I'll be going over my personal wishlist and expectations from the G rank expansion. Thanks to those of you who voted in the poll, in the future I will cover other voted on topics. But for now, let's get into this discussion. Call it what you will, G rank, master rank, the ultimate version, Iceborne 2.0, the G rank versions of Monster Hunter games always improve upon the base game while making it harder. In context of Sunbreak, we'll most likely get new switch skills, some kind of twist on the endemic life mechanic, and new forms of gear like Apex slash Rampage armor. We will always get new monsters accompanied by returning monsters with their appropriate gear and skills. It is just a matter of which monsters return and how many of them will end up being included in the game, which I'll save for the wishlist section. I'd estimate around 70 monsters will be included, excluding any Apex variants, since the last few games aim to double the base game roster. The story will follow the Monster Hunter blueprint, albeit with voice acting now. Malzino is the Magnamolo of Sunbreak, foreshadowing the arrival of the All Mother tier monster. So something bigger and better than Malzino will be the final boss. Along the way, you take out both new and familiar threats to become the very best hunter that no one ever was. Based on Rise, post-release content will follow pre-world DLC, meaning no new monsters will be included in any event quests. Rise is unique since it is the first game to implement a segmented model, trickling in monsters over the months after release that we should have had on day one. This is similar but not the same as the live updates, but rather a model that allows for the game to be released on time. Once the game is considered complete, no additional monsters will be dropped afterwards, just harder versions of existing ones akin to Emergency. If the planned events contain more collabs with other franchises and properties like Street Fighter and USJ, then the post-release content won't be flaming garbage like the Rise quote-unquote content in between said collabs. Stickers just suck as quest rewards since they are one and done rewards. Also, not all of the gestures are good in my opinion. Give me new armor and weapons and I'll be happy to farm them without any complaints. Rise based its theme on Japan and its monster roster on Yokai. Sunbreak will likely follow suit in theming and monster roster. However, we don't know exactly which nation Elgato is based on, but if I had to guess, I would say it would be Britain or Spain, since they mentioned a queen and knights. Malzino represents the vampire monster, specifically Dracula, and the new wolf monster is werewolf. The Sunbreak roster will likely follow Malzino's lead, basing their designs off of famous European monsters like vampires and werewolves. I'm not the biggest European buff, but I would guess that the following European based creatures will serve as the inspiration for what new monsters we receive and what monsters will return. These being crows, snakes, spiders, Jack the Ripper, the Black Knight, Loch Ness Monster, unicorns, and the Grim Reaper. Yangaruga should represent the crow, Najarella the snake, and Nursella the spider. Najarella and Nursella haven't been in a game since Monster Hunter GU, so naturally I want them to return especially since they fit into this theme. Jack the Ripper could be a Gosserag variant, but I want Seregios in that slot instead. It is literally the blade monster and introduced the bleed mechanic. It fits the Ripper theme well and should be brought back. The Black Knight could be a Magnamolo variant being clad in iron armor rather than the samurai armor of its Kamurin counterpart. It would have a claymore for a tail and would have hard spots akin to Silver Rathlos and Gold Rathian. If we look at pre-world games, the flagship always got a souped up version in a future installment. Valstrex got Crimson Glow, Faded 4 got Deviant, Gormagala got Chaotic Gormagala, and Ligiacris got Abyssal. While on the topic of Ligiacris, it is the Loch Ness monster in my head canon, so it's the perfect and only fit for the fabled Plesiosaur. Many requested for Lagi to return and I am one of those people, if it's too well thematically to be excluded. Similarly, Kirin fills the role of the unicorn. In some forms of media, it's depicted as a giraffe or dragon, but design-wise, it's a unicorn and monster hunter. The Grim Reaper is most likely taken by Shogun Sienator, but in the case that it's not, Glavinus is the best runner up. The fact that its tailspin looks like a reaper swinging its scythe is my main justification for this. Theming aside, Glavinus should be given the Zenogre and Nargakuga treatment whenever possible and return to every installment moving forward. Baby form monsters should receive their large monster counterparts since it would just be a maturation process. Namely, Tetsukabra and Zamtrios should return while the others can be added at the discretion of Capcom. Similarly, monsters with deviants should receive Apex equivalents. Apex copy and paste a lot of the deviant animations, so Nargakuga and Tigrex would get a similar treatment in their Apex forms. You should be able to warfall out of roar based knockdowns. It's a dumb design to not be able to get back up just because you got caught off guard mid-air. 
Given that Roars and G-Rank games of yore led into insta-death moves, that would be a buff I would want in order to avoid getting carded after being roared at while falling from the high ground. Wirebug Whisperer should receive a buff to give a third permanent Wirebug. It encourages Wirebug heavy weapons to make use of this skill and this buff would aim to diversify builds, especially with the addition of new and potentially broken Silkbind attacks. Since G-Rank allows for more slots, you can min-max much easier and you could squeeze in Wirebug Whisperer with their usual crit skills and protective polish. You should be able to stockpile spare birds. It allows you to decide whether or not you need them for a particular hunt and save them up for harder hunts in the future. It promotes thoughtful gameplay and encourages you to farm them up during your hunts. In this hypothetical, you would be able to equip a quote unquote null pedal lace that grants zero boost when collecting spare birds in exchange for the ability to store them up into your storage. To use them, just swap out to a regular Petalace and start the hunt with accumulated Spearbird buffs. I refrain from talking about specific weapon balances because I didn't want to bog down this video with that discussion. I may post one in the future on what changes need to be made to the weapon roster but that is for another time. Again, thank you for those of you who voted in my poll. Until Sunbreak comes out, I don't really know what I want to cover so I'll continue asking you guys what you want to see. Hopefully this video was helpful gave some insight, or was entertaining. That's all I got for this one. Greedy Knight, signing out.